Hi, welcome to another video. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to capture the screen using the SSD 1963 screen driver or TFT driver. So today I'm using Microelectronica's EasyPick Fusion version 7 as always. I've got the MZ microcontroller which is important because it's got a massive 512 kilobytes of RAM. That's relevant and I'll tell you in a few minutes. Uh, this screen 800 by 480. Let me turn it on and I'll give you a demo. I've got some delays in it so you can see everything happening slowly. This is writing to the frame buffer on this display driver. Drawing a picture, capture that middle bit and display it on the white screen. And once I've got the bits, I can manipulate the colours. So this is a section from the uh, SSD 1963 datasheet. So your MCU goes here, microcontroller. In my case, I'm running 16-bit parallel master port, and that is relevant and important. I'll show you in a minute. When you write to your controller, you're writing data to the frame buffer, and then this controller sends that frame buffer information out to your LCD display. So if you look at the size of the frame buffer, that's 1.2 million, is it bytes? So 1215, 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, 1, 1. So 1, 2, 1, 5, thousand. So that's 1.215 million bytes. So you think, great, can I store more than one picture? To utilize that frame buffer and to hold more than one picture, you would have to use a screen size of half of that depth, so half of 480 is 220, so that would be a 320 by 240. So you're still wasting half of the length of that frame buffer, but you could get that, then have two pictures and you'd know, select one half of the frame buffer and then boom, select the second half and you've got a picture, you know, in a, in a fraction of a second. So back to this frame buffer, when you ask it, when you set an address or ask for an address and keep on asking the SSD auto increments the buffer so that takes out all the legwork in your code so when you're plotting say a pixel at address 00, zero starts here top left so it's 800 by 480 every time you plot a pixel the SSD increments this frame buffer so you just keep on writing now in my case on this screen, if this is 800 long by 480 deep, I've told it this is 800 columns and 480 rows. I've told it to come in 200 columns, select 400 columns by 200 rows deep, get that information, clear the screen and paint that picture on a clear screen. So using Micro C Pro for PIC32, I've enabled the parallel master port. If you're not sure how to do it, go and look at my, one, of, one of my other videos. So to write directly to the frame buffer, assuming you only want a small portion, you then have to define your portion. So columns, 800 columns and 480 rows. So if we look here, that first red block I'm drawing, if we look here, so start column and end column. So if we look at this end column, so I'm starting at zero, look at this end column, one, zero, A. Bring up Windows Calculator, change to Programmer View, Hex, uh, highlight the hexadecimal, so one, zero, A. Decimal, 
266. I'm starting at zero, top left hand corner, and the end column is going to be 266 columns in. So that's roughly a third of 800. And I'm drawing my red line. If we look at the page, so I'm starting at the top of the page, so top left hand corner again, and then coming down, 1A, 1E0 is the end page and that should be 480 because the, the block is 480 deep. Bring up the calculator again. Go to hex, 1E0, 1E0, 480 deep. So all I have to do is send my data port directly to that address. And every time it sees that request, the SSD 1963 increments the data as it keeps on getting data coming in. So I've got a simple for loop, i equals naught, i is less than 127,680, i plus plus. And because we're dealing with a 16-bit data line, we're at red, green, and blue. If you're not familiar, first in 16-bit mode, first five bits are red, second six bits are green, and the last five bits are blue. So red, green, and blue. So th this first sequence, I'm just drawing the red block. So where have I got the 127,680 from? Bring up the calculator again. Just go, or go standard. So I've already said the block is 266 wide. So 266, or well that's the end column. So 266 wide by 480 deep times 480 equals 127,680 bytes. So that's how I send the red. Then I simply change the color for the blue or for the green. The green is middle six bits. I'm using a buffer which is 16 bits wide. Small delay. Then I'm sending the blue. So you can see red, green, and then blue. 565 color format, 16 bits. Then I'll draw a picture of that horse in the snow. I forgot something, so here's that, uh, where I'm drawing that last color blue. So it's right memory, uh, right to memory, right memory start is uh, 2C. So set index pointer 2C and then write command 2C. And I've done loads of tests, it took me over six hours to get the going. You need both of those functions to, to get this to work. Remember, you need parallel master port in, uh, initialized. You can have it in 16 bit or 8 bit, but if you have it in 8 bit, you're going to struggle writing or getting the 16 bit color details back. So don't forget, when you're writing to the memory, set index pointer to 2C and then write command 2C and then write your code. Simple as that. PMD, so parallel master data in. Now parallel master data in is the same as parallel master data out. So draw the horse. So here, I'm changing the capture area. I'm coming in and down to just grab the horse from the sort of lower middle section of the picture. So if we come here, for example, so start column is zero, 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 and C8. So C8 is actually, all I know is 200. So go to program view, go to hex, C8. Yeah, so start column is 200, the high byte and then the low byte. So two, coming in 200, which, and I know the picture is 400 long. So this would come in 200, if that's 400 long, then this end column should be 600. So let's type that into the calculator, 258, click on hex, should be 600, 258, 600. So come in 200, read up to 600, and then the page, come down 200, 
see C8 is a star page and then come down to 190 so start page is 200 and come down to 190 X come down to 400 so we're starting at 200 coming down 200 means our picture is 200 deep so it's 400 long by 200 deep the standard view 400 long times 200 deep equals 80,000 so 80,000 reads but the parallel master port is giving me 16 bits of data which I'm putting into a buffer and just in incrementing the buffer with J so that 80,000 reads so multiply this by 16 1,280,000 bits of information just in that little 400 by 200 picture but that is giving me my 16 bit color in my buffer so yeah to read the memory start set index pointer 2e and then write command 2e couldn't be easier I tried this many years ago but it's fine yeah what bit do you need here what bit do you need there and it took me six hours but it's so easy when you look at it that's how you capture the information from an SSD 1963 using 16-bit parallel master port it's simple as one two three isn't it well some of this code is for something else but so here is my buffer so it's not a char because it's got to hold 16 bits of information 16 for the red, green and blue, 565. So it's an int, so it's each buffer is 16 bits wide and I've got 80,000 of them. When you start filling this up, you start filling up your memory. If I go to stats, you see there that 80,000 buffer has given me or used up 30% of my available RAM in the microcontroller. So you do need a fairly big, a fairly decent microcontroller. So it says there we've got, well that's a 512 kilobyte, it actually says 524, so just over 512. But now, so if you're wondering, can you capture 800 by 480 deep? Pull up the calculator. So 800 times 480 equals, we'd need 384,000 ints to get the whole screen in 16 bit 565 color format. So let's see if we can put 384,000 here. And you know what the answer is already, don't you? 384 naught naught naught. So I build now scroll down to my errors. I wonder what the error will be. Oh <laughs> don't know if you can see that. Not enough RAM. So I've actually worked out, you can actually afford, I've worked out you can afford to get, with this 32-bit uh, microcontroller with 512 kilobytes of RAM, you can afford to get 500 by 500. But if you want to decrease the depth, you can go 600 by 400 or 700 by 300, uh, so long as you keep that RAM uh, under 512 kilobits or kilobytes then you can capture a lot of this screen and if you only want it in one color you could actually capture all of it if you just want a monochrome 8-bit color but you want all the color there's not enough memory in a 512 kilobyte microcontroller to capture all that screen which is why I've only captured part of it 
So once I've got my 80,000 uh, bits of information in this buffer, I just increment the frame buffer. So every time it sees a new read or write, it auto increments. So it takes all the legwork out. So you can see four, a simple for loop, I've got 80,000 buffers there and it just increments the buffer. And I can put the picture wherever I want defined as the start column and start page. I can't have it random because the numbers, if I, the random number generator is only a short. So once I've got my pixel information, I'm just displaying. So this one, I'm displaying just the last five bits, which is blue. Then I'll display it in green and red and in green and blue. And then I use an exclusive or, which gives me white. If the part of the horse is black, just turns it to white. You see how quickly, because I've got the buffer as full with this picture, it just boom, lays down a picture. No, no waiting to read off the SD card. Blue, green, red, and then a mixture of different colors. And that's the exclusive ore there, turns it white. And it takes no time at all to read that 1.2 million bits for this horse. Fantastic. So as I said, I'm using Micro C Pro for PIC32. And if you're thinking of buying this IDE, Integrated Development Environment and Compiler, it just does the PIC32 MX and MZ microcontrollers. If I scroll down, so there's all the MX, MX and MZs. All powerful and fast 200 megahertz microcontrollers. I was, I've been, uh, I've been discussing these TFTs with a friend of working out code. Uh, he's got the new MM microcontroller and uh, this doesn't support the MM just yet. They're only baby small microcontrollers, but they've got the fast logic cells uh, and they got port merge. So you can merge say port B with port C to give you a 32 bit parallel output. That's what's coming on the new microchip microcontrollers on the MM series. You've also got the MK. So yeah, port merge, watch out for that in the future. But I'm happy just to have the 200 megahertz MZ microcontroller. So I've taken out most of the delays on this program now. I've got a few at the end, a few um, 100 millisecond delay for the different colors in the middle. I've taken out the random pictures, but I've taken, so let me turn this back on uh, and give you, give you a look. The power of Microelectronica's Micro C Pro for PIC32, Microchips MZ Microcontroller and the SSD 1963 Display Driver. I bet you didn't even see those four pictures being drawn, did you? <laughs> I'll let you see it again. And when that horse picture first is read from this SD card there, as it's being refreshed, we've already captured those million bits in the middle. And now we've got the bits, we just manipulate them. So if you've got a paintbrush program on one of Microelectronica's examples, now when you switch off, there's no need to waste your picture you can just save your bits to an SD card or a USB stick. This shows you the basics of getting those first 400 by 200. The rest you can work out for yourself. Yeah, I've given you the fundamentals. So going back to, I did a demo on the touchpad and drawing and writing with the touch screen. So you can now get like, like the postman, get someone's signature, store it, send it via Wi-Fi, send it to an SD card, USB stick, flash drive, 
anything you want so no longer do you have to lose all your pictures capture them in a split second and re-display them I'll let you watch this a few more times tell me if you can see those four horses being drawn how many milliseconds does that take So the next challenge for me, because this was a big challenge, tried it years ago, couldn't get it to work, uh, took me six hours the other night. The next challenge for me is get rid of the frame buffer and introduce my own SD RAM, uh, like a few megabytes worth, and so that you can have more than one picture drawn to it. Uh, and then when you want to refresh the screen, boom, bang in another picture from some SD RAM. And with Microchip's Parallel Master port, as you write to some flash memory or SD RAM, it increments the addresses. So, I don't know, maybe it will be easy. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you found this informative and helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.